Prelude number 11 is a very special piece. It's one of only three works still existing today um, that have fingerings in Bach's own hand. Let me point out a few interesting ones. This is where Bach puts uh, both the thumb and the pinky on the black note. I've argued with so many students who would rather do gymnastics on the piano and acrobatics of every kind rather than do so. So here's your official permission. Thumb and pinky do go on black notes if necessary in Bach's own handwriting. Structurally, the piece is another lovely minuet. It helps a great deal in playing it to visualize two and later more dancers doing something graceful and lovely on the dance floor, sometimes imitating each other's gestures, sometimes moving together, sometimes moving one at a time. It would be a grave mistake to treat the left hand at any point as mere accompaniment. It is always a full partner. The phrases flow beautifully one into the other when treated iambically, in other words, beginning on the weak beat and going right to the next strong beat. Now let's deal with the elephant in the room. And the main reason why this beautiful prelude is so little performed, and that is the huge difficulty of the abundance of ornamentation in both the right and the left hands here. There is a good reason why composers stopped writing as much ornamentation once piano overtook the harpsichord as the principal keyboard instrument. Um, ornamentation is much too difficult on the piano. I often uh, perform on the harpsichord, and as I find myself usually practicing on the piano, what happens during every performance on a harpsichord is that I play exactly twice as many notes for every single ornament as I had originally planned for the piano. They seem to play themselves. So the solution for students, especially younger and inexperienced ones, is to either cut down the number of ornaments or to simplify them. Mm -hmm. Still, it would be wonderful to be able to play this music with all the flourishes and the richness and the sophistication which the composer intended. In other words, with all of the ornaments the way they are written. So first let me remind you that we need not guess at what the symbols mean, that the Bach uh, ornaments table is a wonderful guide and tells us everything we need to know. In order to play the particularly difficult ornaments on the piano, it helps to use the technique invented by Ferruccio Busoni, the great German-Italian pianist, who taught us so much about the way we see Bach in the world today. Um, this technique is called metricization, where you simply write the ornaments out in note values that we can understand. Perhaps after the ornament has been well learned and digested, it can become free. But uh, it is very difficult, especially for a student, to learn it like that in the first place. I must admit that when I learn difficult ornaments, I metricize them as well. My final suggestion is to avoid using urtext editions when working with students. It has been my observation that ornament signs tend to produce only fear and loathing in children. Um, there are many wonderful editions available today with ornaments written out that make even the most complicated preludes and also symphonias and inventions possible for all students.